You bless your gospel again, one, a falcon, fife, and sleeve, with pluggy dross, a gum, one, well, a vintern, a tant, and in, tan, a tant, or tan, a tant, a pair at the plugging, his plethy roth and bell. in its continuing tradition of bridging gaps between cultures across the globe. The British Council's Folk Nations program is an exciting journey that brings together the cultures of the UK and India through its diverse folk music. A large part of what Folk Nations was supposed to be is also reaching out into the corners of both countries, UK and India, to find out what other um, traditions exist and also to create an awareness at both ends about uh, the unheard of traditions. And that's kind of where we identified Northeast. As part of this three-year project, 12 folk musicians from the UK and Northeast India met for a residency to find a meeting point for two cultures that have a combined history of over 5,000 years. Shall we start with you? Would you like to play a little something, maybe um, a couple of minutes? Um, it's about love and loss, I guess. Um. And a space that's between us from earth to the sun Would you make my heart sing? I came here with an open mind and I think uh, that was um, the best thing to do, I think, you know, because uh, yeah, you're not sure how you're going to interact with, you know, not just the Indian musicians, but the the, the other musicians from the UK as well, you know, because I, I I never knew them before either. So. When we arrived in Calcutta. The, these six musicians who had come from the UK, we, we hadn't really met each other. Um, so it was exciting to be in this new place and we had a gig straight away. So the pressure was on, but uh, it, was, it was great fun. We, uh, we uh, got a gig together and, uh, and so that, that was really enjoyable. Uh, the best way to come into a program like this or an event like this is to uh, to not have any expectations and that way you never really know what you're going to, to find. You can do as much research as you can, as you want to before, but uh, you never know what's going to happen. It's a well-known fact that the musicianship in the Northeast is extremely strong. So we decided to venture into the Northeast and see what's available there. Hey, the first of its kind on this scale in the region, the Folk Nations Residency offers musicians across the two continents a platform to share their unique folk traditions and an opportunity to understand what goes into the making of each other's music. Something like that. <laughs> An exploration in the truest sense of the word. The musicians will have to collaborate from the ground up, overcoming language barriers and significantly different cultural backgrounds. भाषा भी अलग है लेकिन फिर भी उन लोगों से थोड़ा 
ट्यूनिंग भी मिलता है और जो भाषा ये कभी कभी मिलता है लेकिन वो लोग दूसरे जगह अलग जगह रहने की वजह से हमारा थोड़ा डिफरेंट है इसलिए थोड़ा दिक्कत होता है इसमें I don't understand Nagamis or uh, Assamis, but the English, uh, I understand them. <laughs> and I had a band in Mizoram, uh, but I play metal. <laughs> I usually play metal. Uh, I play the folk a little bit. Mm. Obviously, we can all speak English, which helps. And then I found quite a lot of similarities with the types of songs that we've worked with here because they're universal songs. They're all human songs. They're all songs about life and. Um, Everyone, every culture has their own versions of these songs. We've been doing lullabies yesterday. Uh, we've linked over a song about the cuckoo. I asked them if they had any songs about cuckoos and everyone had a different song about the cuckoo. You know, so there's all these kind of common themes all the time. Unlike Indian folk instruments that have largely remained unchanged, Western instruments have evolved over the years. This difference reflects in the manner in which the two cultures approach their music. ये बीन जो है अभी हम लोग जो बजा रहा है ये बहुत साल का पुराना है और पुराना रटे हुए भी बीच में गुम हो गया था इसको बनाने में हमें लगता है तीन दिन ये नारियल का खोला हो गया इसको काट करके हम लोग समान करके इसका अलग से बाढ़ जुड़ा जाता है बजाने के लिए जो ये की लगता है हमें साबी और साबी में तार जुड़ा जाता है और आर्ट भी रहता है इसमें चिड़िया या कुछ कुछ अगरा बगरा बनाते रहते हैं जो मेटलिक इंस्ट्रूमेंट है उस साउंड से पुराना इंस्ट्रूमेंट जितना है फोक ये बनाने वाला अपना हाथ से बनाने वाला उसका आवाज़ तो थोड़ा बहुत मिलता भी है लेकिन कोई कोई आवाज़ नहीं भी मिलता है आई थिंक वॉट अलॉट ऑफ कंटेम्प्री फोक म्यूजिशन इन द यू के एंड अप डूइंग इज टेकिंग रिफाइंड इंस्ट्रूमेंट लाइक द वायलिन द वायलिन हैज 500 years of history behind it and yet what we do when we play it is try and make the sound organic and gritty and soily so we're in a way we're trying to keep that earthiness in our music despite playing very technically advanced instruments folk nations is endeavor to create a space where artists can explore cultural heritage found an ideal partner in the government of nagaland which with its unique music task force has music promotion as an official policy a state of the art performing arts center that will host musicians from across the region is yet another step forward in this direction the music task force began as a concept of the government of nagaland with the nomenclature of the special task force for music to examine the concept of whether music could be taken up a little more seriously and to allow the youth to take up music as a full time activity founded on a vision that went beyond simply encouraging emerging musicians the music task force promotes music as a full time industry in the region skill sets that have expanded because of this has a uh, allowed us to take a look at more opportunities so we have people who are investing in the hardware we have people who are building up the skill sets as recording engineers we have people who are now even thinking of uh, part time uh, skills as roadies traveling you know the entire state just to set up the infrastructure for platforms to happen then we have people like um, uh, the event teams that pull in all the skill sets to allow the then the musicians to focus only on their music the north east zone cultural center were extremely useful um they were the ones who helped us identify all the other artists from across the region and it's owing to this kind of support that we received from both these agencies that this project was what it was the other partners who were involved with us and who have been part of this entire journey with us from the very inception have been the creative scotland and wales arts international uh, these are extremely valuable partners for us from in identifying and supporting um the access to artists in both scotland and in wales
The residency's grueling schedule has the visiting musicians dividing their time between collaborating with their Indian counterparts and practicing together for a gig at the Hornbill Festival. Amongst the first to be officially invited to travel to Northeast India to explore the folk culture of the region, this group of UK musicians is part of a pioneering effort to build links between the region's immense musical talent and the global music industry. A novel project in the region, Folk Nations is striking all the right chords and has even attracted the attention of the Chief Minister of Nagaland, whose vision led to the creation of the Music Task Force. Uh, when I when I got to the the festival, we did we didn't have an awful lot of time, uh, really, in the scale of things. So I, I thought it would be a, quite a nice idea to approach uh, one of the members of the tribes and uh, talk to them and try and learn a bit more about the music. I found a young a young man who uh, who spoke incredibly good English and. Uh, and uh, spent a lot of the time at the festival with him and uh, talking to him about, um, about why he does it and, uh, and the history behind it. Enveloped by hypnotic chants and stirring rhythms, the visitors couldn't help but join the unity dance the grand finale of the Hornbill Festival that celebrates oneness, unity and strength. One of the most significant events in Northeast India, the Hornbill Festival is a showcase of the 16 tribes of Nagaland and is a wonderful celebration of local heritage. It is in many ways a window to this corner of the world. It's normally folk. Uh, bands don't play necessarily stages this big or certainly in my experience very rarely so we sort of took a while to sort of figure out where we'd set up. Set up. I'm trying to imagine what it's going to look like with loads of people there. Um, I think I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm very excited, you know, I'm really looking forward to it and also obviously a little bit, a little bit apprehensive. Um, you know, we've only had, you know, a couple of times to really run through the set. Um, so lots of the songs are new and we've obviously haven't played together before apart from once in Calcutta. So um, yeah, excited but nervous at the same time. <laughs> Performing at the Hornbill Festival would be an important milestone for folk nations as a concept. It represents a push to engage Indian audiences with the folk trend rising in the global music industry. As a whole group, we were quite worried before we went on stage, but um, the audience was so welcoming and warming. Just after our first number, I think all of those doubts went away. Thank you very much for such a warm welcome. And yeah, it's really good to be here at the Hornbill Festival. Often referred to as the Festival of Festivals, Hornbill has begun to attract significant global attention. With this first ever international showcase, the festival heralds Northeast India opening its doors to the world.
Experiencing the local tradition at the Hornbill Festival gave the UK musicians a better understanding of their collaborators. But in spite of finding many similarities, the desired musical confluence is still taking time. With this project, what we're hoping to find two or a small group, maybe three or four musicians who've really found a very strong connection, who found enough of a, a, a meeting point where they can begin to develop their own sound. I learned my first folk song from my parents, uh, who in turn learned them from their parents and the elders of the village. Uh, since then, uh, we have been uh, traveling back to our village and meeting with uh, aunts and great aunts and uncles and learning more songs from them. I've been learning a few. We've been learning lots of the kind of working songs, like the Hiriya Ho, Hiriya He, which is easier for us to sing uh, those phrases. Um, I've also been um, learning an Assamese song. Everybody wants to have learned their folk tunes from, you know, an old relative or something who sings it, passes it down through generations. But unfortunately, in the UK, that element is kind of may, uh, largely passed by now and people often get their tunes like I did and like Rich does from either writing our own or uh, going into the archives and things like that. One of the tunes that I brought along, uh, it didn't fit on one of the particular flutes. There weren't the same notes and so we decided to leave those notes out. So we've changed the tune. So in a way, the tune has met in the middle. Out here, they listen to every kind of music, and uh, and most uh, in Nagaland they're uh, very much like uh, influenced by Western music and all. But I think there are some surprises this time because we have, as we have, uh, like already shared with the UK musicians, and they're they're singing some folk stuffs. So this time they will find it a little bit different, but good. They'll get a good response. That's what I expect. I can like predict anything <laughs> further than that. I hope that other people aren't disappointed that there aren't going to be more people to hear this. I'm, I'm not disappointed because I feel that like what we've done this week has been a, an exploration, so it's not about the kind of display. We see a lot more sort of um, confidence in our musicians to say that yes, at least uh, we know it'll make sense to continue with this brand of music. It's fascinating to see how how many things traditional musicians do differently in different places, but also how many things we do broadly the same. What I thought today was, maybe we have taught the British or the British have taught us because they were here before 1947. And why should the folk be so similar, so close and same as the Karbis? so many uh, similarities even though we're so far apart in terms of geography so uh, that's really wonderful and I see the the spirit with which they're continuing the journey as folk artists and it encourages me uh, to continue this journey okay. 
in terms of my enjoyment personally of being exposed to these kinds of tunes which may not have been heard by many people at all, uh, that's a real thrill and, 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 and I'm very privileged to have been given the opportunity. Dancing में आकर तो मुझे बहुत ही अच्छा लगा नॉर्थ का म्यूजिक फ्रेन में चला जाएगा तो हम के लिए ये अच्छा ही बात है ना This brings us to the end of what I'm not going to call a gig I think it's fair enough to say that this is a showcase of what we've been doing over the past 10 days um, work in progress work in progress work in progress before this residency, there had been no kind of previous, you know, collaborations between musicians from Ireland, Scotland, England, and Wales, and this region of India. So we are uh, we're making little steps. <laughs> Sharing is, is extremely valuable to us all and when I'm there sitting at home playing I will always be thinking of traditional musicians over here and all over the world playing uh, and trying to expe express um, nuggets of, of what it is to, to be alive. <laughs> Lopong biri ta jogun, lopong biri 